Hi everyone, welcome to Mindset Adventure. I'm Tini and I'm here with Stacey Sinclair, who is a yoga teacher. And our intention for today is to talk to you about uh, the importance of taking frequent breaks whenever we're sitting too much at our desks, but we will see where this conversation leads us. <laughs> so, uh, hi Stacey, thank you for accepting my invitation. Um, and please tell us how did you decide to become a yoga teacher? Ah, big question. Um, thank you for having me on this call. And um, well, I started, I guess, the path as a massage therapist. So that's what I've done um, for quite a while. And I felt like I, I really help people. I really, uh, I really love helping people and I really love connecting with people. Um, but it, it felt limited because it was always on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And um, I really wanted to uh, connect to even more people as well as, you know, massage was only one aspect to health. And I wanted to empower them more than anything to, to really take health into their own hands. So um, I also, you know, follow um, a spiritual path. So I wanted to get to know just everything about me, um, mind, body, spirit. And yeah, so then I, I got into yoga and it just felt like a really nice balance. Um, I was able to connect with more people. I was able to bring that more like empowerment side um, to health. So it wasn't just me, you know, massaging somebody, somebody who's taking health into their own hands, um, as well as getting even even deeper into um, the well-being, again, going more into that kind of spiritual, um, energetic side of things. When you're saying spiritual, oh, is there a, a specific teacher or a specific method or approach that you would like to share that you're, I don't know, in, inspired? Um, yeah, I guess uh, I'm not... I wouldn't consider myself like the typical yogi. Um, I don't necessarily have a, a guru um, per se. And I'm, I'm like, I guess you could say I'm, I'm pretty non-traditional and yet traditional in some ways. So my biggest guru really is nature. Um, I've always been, you know, inspired by all things nature, the, from the birds to the moon to the trees, to, to everything. And so I think the piece of union, or sorry, of yoga, which means union, and that's the piece that um, really resonated with me. Um, and that's what I see nature to be, is this beautiful, you know, um, kind of design that is in harmony and all the pieces connect and, and play a part. So, yeah, I think yoga was just like another kind of vehicle and avenue to explore that idea. Um, but, but nature is actually my biggest, my biggest guru um, that I, I kind of follow. That's beautiful because you can find it anywhere, right? Almost, yeah. let's say. <laughs> but you can, yeah. yeah, you can bring nature to you if you, if you are not in nature. I think. Yes, exactly. Yeah, the air we breathe is nature, you know? Um, yeah, so. Um, walk us through your routine. Let's say, do you have a morning routine? I try to, yeah. I, I'm like, um, you know, majority of people where I sometimes fall off the, the routine. Um, yeah, I think having a morning routine though really makes a big difference and so I, I do set the intention to to stay with that as much as possible um it doesn't always look the same so i do i like i'm a free-flowing person so I, I like to kind of change it up and kind of go with, with kind of what what's inside of me in the moment um but the general theme is to wake up and try not to let my thoughts drift in too many directions um, at the beginning and kind of bring that focus, bring that intention um, to, you know, what I'm hoping for in the day or just, just simply positive thoughts, loving thoughts. And then I get up and I start moving my body and it might be actually a bit of cardio or it might just be like general movements, go into a yoga practice for that flow aspects and stretching. And um, I'm a, 
core is kind of my my jam and and it's not core to some people sounds like you know like ah i really want to give her but to me it goes back to that union aspect of like core when we have core strength we it it extends in all directions it helps to keep us stable um but also core representing like our core beliefs that alignment within within self and within our intentions and and our hopes and dreams um so i try to connect when i connect physically to my core um i connect through all areas of my life and i feel stronger um not just physically but mentally and spiritually as well so i try to yeah wake up set a good intention uh, move the body have some water and then touch my phone <laughs> sometimes <laughs> I did, and I just can't help it, but I really try not to touch my phone um, right away. Uh, try and get those important things done, and then uh, whatever happens after that. I like that uh, that way of looking at, at the core. I really like it. I haven't heard it before with the alignment and everything. I know that core is important for balance. I do also work my core a lot, and that's my focus. Um, I do Pilates and yoga, but oh, yeah. I, I haven't uh, looked at things in, from that perspective of aligning everything also in the beliefs and perception and everything else around us. So I really like that. Um, what would you suggest for people to start with if they wanted to work on their core? On their core? Mm -hmm. um, you actually don't need to to do anything too strenuous so um i do have a video on my youtube channel um that's all about sensing the core so that's actually one of the best places to start even if you have a, a strong core practice when we connect mind and body it is so much more powerful than just jumping into an exercise so especially if you're new new to the practice um, all we do in that video is you lie on your back and you can use your hands to, to, to palpate and, and connect physically with it um, or just your mind. And I just get you to go through um, contracting the muscles in that area. So I just get you to sense what it feels like and can you distinguish, you know, the different areas, your rectus, your transverse, your obliques. And and then what's really cool after somebody has has practiced that just for you know a few minutes when we do go to do maybe something a bit you know more dynamic boom they're they're like lit up you know and they feel so much stronger because they took the time to connect mind and body oh my god so, that's so so important and i i even saw that i know that you're doing a challenge right a uh, push-up challenge uh, yes, for mental health awareness. Yeah, and that, I liked it because you're not just doing a warm up, but you're getting yourself into the state of yes, I can do this, and everything is going to flow. So, yeah, I like it a lot. I like that approach. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it it all, it all comes down to what I try to do, and and even with that push up challenge, it's about variations, and um, so kind of I I'm still new. I've, I've been uh, you know, working with massage and yoga for a while, but I'm still new to this online world, especially with um, COVID and everything. It's kind of pushed me into this. And um, so exploring kind of a statement and uh, the idea is expanding awareness through exploration. And so, and that the key word, of course, awareness, but also that exploration. So all of these variations it's just an exploration, you know, it's not one is better than the other. It's just having a moment to just explore and see what happens. And um, yeah, so that's where I like to kind of break it down. And that's where I think, you know, for somebody who's just getting into it, my hope is, you know, to, to create an environment where they feel like they're just playing, you know, they're not, they're not working hard. They're just simply exploring and playing and and they can kind of you know feel a bit of success of like oh cool i didn't know that was possible i i didn't know if you could feel that or what have you um yeah yeah regardless if they want to keep going with it or not but at least they get to experience something new right and they keep yeah. it varied and they have fun i mean new yeah. is almost always fun i think <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, and speaking of variety, um, I know that sometimes um, we get all caught up into whatever it is that we're doing. So we forget to take that moment of break. How, how would you approach that? Um, is, there, is it related to mindset or is it something else? I think it's a, I mean, I think everything's a little bit of everything, but um, it, it goes, they go hand in hand. So it's mindset, yes. And also by incorporating these little breaks will change your mindset too, or help to, you know, to align it. So it can go both directions. Yeah. So um, yeah, because I, either we can get, our bodies can get stuck into a position, right? It's like, really I got to get through this and so everything tenses up and that of course is gonna cause our mindset to not be so uplifting so even if you just like sit up for a moment and just sit up a little straighter how that affects your mood right versus like slumping down so um, I think first yes it has to be a decision to a certain extent of I'm going to actively you know put time aside and maybe set my timer um, to get up. And as you get up, it will also change your mindset to encourage you to want to do more. And so I, I think that's, that's why I believe these little short breaks are so powerful because often the biggest thing I hear is I don't have time to exercise. And, that's, and I am terrible for that myself because I put this, it has to be 60 or 90 minutes long. You know, like a studio class is often that amount of time. But then we forget, you know, we don't have to just wait for that time slot. We can be giving ourselves these little gifts all throughout the day. Um, so I, again, it goes back to that breaking it down so it's manageable, you know, so you can actually work with it and, and fit it in no matter what. Do you do set different things? For instance, let's say you have five minutes um to spare uh do you know what you're going to do or do you just go with the flow or what would you recommend people to do um i think it could be both let's say you've got some moves that um you really like like my partner um he's got you know certain moves that he's just like he'll just get up and blast them out. And that's what he does. It's, it's ingrained in him. Me again, I'm a little more free flow. So what I like to do is have kind of a list or uh, it could be a written list that you just have to like look to and be like, Hey, what haven't I done for a while? Or, or mentally, you know, you've got your, your things that um, you like to do. And so you just revert back to that mental list, but it is good just to have something um, that in mind so that yeah when you've got those extra five minutes you can just kind of mentally or physically go through the list and be like okay I'm gonna try that on and it's almost like a commercial break you know commercial break pop up move dance um, you know do whatever and uh, yeah and it just and even like I'll do things at, at the grocery store like if I'm standing in line um, it's actually become a weird habit where if I'm standing talking to somebody, I'll go into a tree pose. And I'll just play with balance. And they're like, can you not stand like normal? No, not really. <laughs> I do that I too. I swing my legs and <laughs> just to be in motion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, I've got a list of, of some things that... Um, uh, in fact, do you want to try one right now? Are you game? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, let's do it. So here's my favorite one. If you want to stand up, hopefully everybody can see. Oh my God, I don't know. I've got my headphones. Oh, okay, fine. You're going to make okay, it on you my do own. it. You do it. I'll just do it standing, sitting. <laughs> you, can, you can be seated. So this is one of the most powerful things you can do. And I, I usually teach this to corporate groups. And it's so simple, you can literally do it anywhere. And it's called the shake off. And I know maybe that doesn't even sound very yoga like, but if you just get up and you just start shaking and moving and dancing and really like let her go all directions and get really crazy if you want. And it helps to like breathe. So you really like let her out, make some noise. 
And you know what? After a little bit of bouncing, yeah. you can't help but feel good. You know, the energy's flowing, the blood is flowing, and I think it's impossible to have, you know, a frown on your face after you've, you've shaked it off. I think it's really tribal almost. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. And you don't need more than a few seconds to do it. So just getting up and doing something. We don't even need to get up. <laughs> I could yeah. al already feel it. Yeah, it's motion. Exactly. Yeah. So it's little stuff like that. I think, and that's part of that kind of non traditional aspect that I like to bring to it because. The other common thing I hear when it comes to yoga is like, oh yeah, yoga, I can't do yoga, that's not for me. But really yoga is just a practice of awareness. So if you're open to you know, being aware of how you feel, of what's around you, of the thoughts that are in your, your head, of how you're interacting and how you're reacting, um, that's more what yoga is about. And therefore the physical side of it can literally be anything you want. You know, yes, there's a, a traditional asana practice that, and I do teach it, um, but it's these little bits that I'm more passionate about, you know, just um, giving something that anybody can do and just bring some fun, bring some joy to the day. Yeah, so not necessarily knowing what that movement is called. It doesn't have to have a name. I was just, uh, listening to Wayne, Wayne Dyer um, and he was talking about the labels. Whenever you put a label on something, you limit that to yes. that label. So it cannot grow, it cannot expand. So it's exactly like that. You don't even need to know what the pose is called for you to be in it. Yeah. yeah. It's about how it feels more than anything, you know? Yeah, who cares what it's called? You know, it, who cares what it looks like? If it feels good to do, do it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So it's more of a do whatever feels good in the moment, but also have many options to choose from if you don't know where to start. Yeah, and that's, that's also where, you know, especially at the beginning, it is nice to have a coach or it is nice to have you know, that instructor, those classes that you go to, or those one-on-one -on -one sessions, because um, there is a learning curve, right? So when you do take a bit of time at the beginning to set up that foundation so that you can feel, okay, I know that I'm safe doing these moves, or I have a, a level of understanding about my body um, and, how, and what it is capable of, then it also allows you to be more playful right? So it's kind of creating that nice little structure, that a little bit of boundary for you to play within. And then over time, it can expand to become, um, like for me, the, my ultimate version of yoga, I guess you could say, is actually a static dance. So I, I do the, pra I've got a solid yoga practice. I, I've, you know, got a solid understanding of my body so that when I go into a static dance, when I go into these, um, you know, festivals or classes, where you're just like free to move your body, I can. I am free to move my body. I'm not worried and I'm not, I'm not limited. Um, so, but at the beginning and even in maintaining and, and understanding, it is helpful to have some sort of foundation. So, you know, there is a little bit of um, maybe structured work at the beginning for sure. Yeah, but that will allow you to not necessarily be more free, but also, but have, have a vast array of free choices that you can say, yeah, I'm going to do that and not spend too much time on it. I think that's, it. I don't know, you can, you can tell me more about that. Is it sort of like getting the tools that you need to make your life uh, better, I don't know, effortless? Yeah, it's, I think, you know, when I look out into the world and I, and I sit with myself as well, well, the, the key phrase usually is, what are we all looking for? You know, obviously to be happy and to feel free, to not feel restricted. So yes, when you do have an array of, of tools and understanding and you have built that, that foundation, um, you get to choose from all the variations. You're not, you're not 
you're not just limited to like basic mode, right? Or like, um, I'm trying to relate it to programming or something. You, yeah, you can kind of paint with all the colors. And, um, and that, so that becomes, I like that I follow a guy whose name is Seven Bomar and he talks about inner standing and he talks about being a sovereign being and that is that ultimate freedom that you know um that you can get freedom with with finances with money and and you can you know feel freedom with success and different things but really when it all comes down to it it's it's the inside freedom that you know the kind that nobody can take away and it doesn't matter what the circumstance is and so i think playing with this idea of with these foundations and you know the practice of yoga or the practice of awareness awareness is freedom when we're aware of what's going on when we're aware of the situation we have more tools to work with so um yeah so it's just bringing that whole like mind body spirit and and slowly, slowly, just allowing us to be, you know, limitless, really, in our in our choices, and and not in like um, an overwhelming way, you know, because going back to that core, you're you're creating freedom within your body. You're also creating freedom within your mind, which means clarity, right? So you're clear on what you want, what, what you believe in, what are you aligned to? So we're, we're not just saying like, oh, a huge smorgasbord of all sorts of things and just like, just pig out and, you know, what have you, because you're, because I know, like I used to be like, oh, I always want to go to the buffet because I love choices. And then I was like, actually, I don't really love choices. It kind of makes me anxious sometimes. And that food isn't really that great, you know? I think I would rather sit a line and just deliberately go to a restaurant um, where I'm like, and I order that meal that I'm going to enjoy every little piece of it. So it's like that kind of freedom that you know the restaurant and you know the meal that, that you look forward to and you can feel good about making the choice um, that you do, but without also confining to just like habits. Because then there's that side of, oh, I know what I like. I'll just go and order the same thing. You're not scared either. You know, you're not scared to try new things. Um, but you are aligned to, to your truth. I, I went on a bit of a rant. Hopefully that. <laughs> no, it's good. It, yeah, and habits make us feel safe, I think. Yeah. Uh, with the buffet, I like that. I like that anal analogy because when you go to a buffet, you just pick whatever is appealing to your eye but it doesn't go beneath <laughs> and uh, inside. I'm just picking what you need and not just what you see and believe that you need. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And just playing with that idea of, you know, um, the habit and, and comfort, that's just the other side of, again, not being free, right? It kind of feels free in the moment because it's comfortable. But when we sit with these things and we experience, um, you know, when we do say yes to maybe something that we were a little, a little scared of, we realize, oh, that comfort isn't necessarily, you know, freedom, even though it feels like it sometimes. So it's, it's just kind of playing with, you know, the yin and the yang and the, all the elements of it so that we really, we really can show up with full authenticity, full truth. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it, it just feels liberating instead of just doing things in the same way in the same order i'm not saying that's bad uh, some people like it and it's perfectly fine but if you're looking to experience as much as you can from this wonderful world then we can start with just a, a few short breaks in which we just move or we just do something out of the ordinary i think yeah yeah exactly i like yeah, your I approach it. yeah very mm -hmm. much um really much oh my god very much <laughs> uh do you have a um 
a tip that you would like to give um, our listeners, viewers, in terms of either taking a break or connecting to their core, whatever it is? Just one tip. Yeah. Um, and this is, this is what I've had to learn. And this kind of goes actually back to, to the structure. So again, there's structure is good. And, and flow is good, right? It, it's all about a balance. So um, as much as my freedom side doesn't fully like to follow this rule, it, it's really helpful. So it's, it's to put it in your calendar. It's to put, you know, a timer. It's to say, um, to put in your phone, we've got these handy gadgets. Every hour, set it up as, um, as your break. And I do that with um, one of mine, actually, that is, oh man, it's been going on for ages now. It's, I just put it as self-love. And so that pops up, self-love. And sometimes that means me just getting up and moving. And sometimes I actually won't necessarily even take a break physically because maybe mm -hmm. I'm feeling okay. But just seeing those words on the screen reminds me, you know, it's like, right, self-love. And so I just take a pause and I breathe into it and I'm like, yeah. Cool. Thank you for the reminder. Oh. I love it. So some reminders. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. If people want to connect with you, where can they find you? I know you said uh, you mentioned your YouTube channel. Anything else? Yeah. So um, my company is called Sacred Journeys Yoga. So you can find me on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook and as well on my website sacredjourneysyoga.com and um can i uh invite my upcoming event yes um so physically i have um one that is near and dear to my heart which is uh, yoga teacher trainings and uh so i have one coming up in bali next year march 2021 and this is open to anyone. Like I was saying, you know, this is more about um, a journey, an exploration of self than anything else. And, and then you just see what happens after that. You know, if you feel called to teach, great. But I believe that the, these trainings, you can call it a retreat, is more for you, finding your voice, your authentic self, going into the core of things. And um, so that's what I'm offering in March 2021. Uh, 200 hour yoga teacher training so you can go to the website there's more details there um, and I'm trying to do some online stuff but it's it's I'm still old school I like in person <laughs> yeah it feels more more real more I don't know you just get that energy it's easier to connect with the energy of the other person I think yeah and I, I have to say you know much appreciation for this time right now that has opened up the abilities and kind of promoted Zoom calls, um, online calls, because while it doesn't quite feel the same, it's also allowed me to connect, like yourself, um, with people I never would have connected with before. So I just want to share a little gratitude for, for the, the, uh, the world kind of encouraging some, some changes and to get outside of my comfort zone with it as well. So. Yeah, I feel the same way and thank you for that. And I'm also grateful that I met you and that we we just talked about this. Maybe it resonated with many people, but it, it sure opened up my eyes uh, and I see things in a different perspective. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. I really uh, appreciated this time. And um, another little bit that I uh, have started on my page is actually um, a gratitude chain. So I'll formally invite you right now that I would, um, I would love to set up another time uh, to kind of reverse roles. And um, yeah, I'd love to interview you and offer gratitude for what you're doing for the community. I've been, I've been following you for a little bit now and um, to celebrate you as well. So I'll send you a message and, and we'll set up that time if you're into it. Yeah, and okay. uh, I'd love to have you part of the gratitude chain. Yay. <laughs> I've seen it, yeah. I like I like the idea. Yeah. I mean yeah. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much for uh, being here. Any parting words for everyone? I think you know, just keep exploring. Just 
do things that feel good, that are fun. And uh, I guess my biggest tip is to go back to that childlike nature. You know, children are brilliant, brilliant little creatures and we can learn a lot from them. So, yeah. Yeah, I like it. And be curious, exploring and seeing the world as a playground. Yeah, because that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and for everyone watching, I'm sending you all a big hug and don't forget to have fun. Until next time, bye. Thanks, bye.